Hi everyone, this is Anson from AnsonAlex.com and today I'm going to give you an overview tutorial on Google Chrome for Mac. I come way back from the Netscape Navigator days on Windows. I've used Firefox on Windows, I've used Safari on Mac, and Chrome I've used on both Windows and Mac computers. And it is by far my favorite browser. So it's quicker, um, all of your tabs run individual processes, so if one tab is not responding instead of your whole browser crashing, you can just get rid of that one tab and still have all your other tabs open. So it's a great browser. It's my favorite one. I'm going to give you a full overview tutorial, configuring some settings, getting some bookmarks set up, um, working with tabs, your home page, all that kind of stuff in Google Chrome. So I hope it helps and enjoy. Okay, so here I am in Google Chrome. Um, in order to get Google Chrome, if you don't yet have it, you just need to go to google.com slash chrome, and it will take you to this web address right here. And you can just download it and then go ahead and drag it into your applications folder like installing most Mac applications. Once you get Google Chrome open, the first thing you're going to want to do is I'm going to talk about the toolbar and the different locations in Google Chrome, but first I want to take you straight to the preferences because there's a few things that you definitely want to configure before you even get started. So to access the Google Chrome preferences in Macintosh computers, you need to click on the Chrome menu here at the top left and then click on preferences. Now on the first page of preferences, there's a few things you're going to want to specify. First of all, in this section where it says on startup, you're going to want to specify which page opens up. So by default, the new tab page is going to open up, which looks like this. There's not really much there. You've got access to some of Google's products, but uh, I tend to like a more personalized experience. So instead of the new tab page, you can either continue where you left off in your last session, which is a pretty popular option, or you can pick a specific page or set of pages. So if I click on this radio dial and hit set pages, I can go ahead and I can add some pages. And you see I have a couple that are already in here. I'll, you know, I tend to start up with my website and Gmail, so I have my email. So I'll leave it as that and hit OK. But you could enter a new URL here, whatever you want, google.com, cnn.com, your email service, um, whatever you want. Um, so that's definitely something you're going to want to take a look at. This appearance section, there's a few things in here. At some point, you might want to get a theme for your Google Chrome browser. So if you click on Get Themes, it's going to take you to the Chrome Web Store. And it's got a ton of different themes you can pick to kind of customize your browser. So you could pick one um, that you think is best for you. I'm not going to do it right now because I kind of want the default browser here during this tutorial. But you're definitely welcome to go ahead and look at that at your own time. You can just mouse over a theme and click Choose Theme. Um, so take a look at that. I'm just going to close out this tab for now. But these two options, I definitely suggest checking. Always show the home bot button. Watch what happens up here when I click that checkbox. I hit that checkbox, and now I have a little home symbol, a house symbol in my toolbar, and I can specify what I want my home page to be. So I'm going to leave it as AnsonAlex.com, but I could make that any website. So that means when you first start up Google Chrome, um, when you first start up Google Chrome, it's going to go to these pages. But when you hit this home button, and if I open a new tab and do that, you'll see that it's going to take me to AnsonAlex.com. So it's kind of uh, a good feature to enable so you can always get to your favorite page really quick. And also close that out. And always show the bookmarks bar. I like to enable this as well. Watch what happens up here to my toolbar when I check that box. You'll see now I have this bar when I can, where I can add some bookmarks. And you see I have one quick link bookmark. It's for Pinterest so I can quickly pin images. Uh, but in a little while here, I'll show you how you can add other bookmarks to this bar so you can have quick access to your favorite websites. Um, you can set your search settings. I tend to choose Google. That's my favorite search engine, so you can probably leave that as, as is. But there's one other thing in the settings that I want to show you right now. And to do that, we have to go to the advanced settings. So I'm just going to click on show advanced settings down here. And there is this one section uh, way down here. Oops, actually, I'm sorry. Under privacy, you want to click on content settings up at the top. I just started right here under content settings. And then uh, if you scroll down a little bit, there's this pop-ups. Uh, back in the old days, we used to have a ton, a ton of pop-ups, so having a pop-up blocker was pretty necessary. But nowadays, I tend, at least the websites I visit, don't have that many pop-ups. And some websites I visit have pop-ups that are meaningful, that I need to see. So I tend to allow pop-ups. By default, I believe it's set to do not allow pop-ups. As you can see, Google recommends it. Anson Alexander doesn't. That's your choice. Uh, but if you want to enable that, that's how you can do it. Um, other than that, I'm not going to show you any more settings right now. I'm just going to click OK here. And I'm going to go to my home page 
and I'll close out this other tab. So now let's talk about using Google Chrome. I think one of the main differences you're going to notice when you first get into Google Chrome compared to other browsers is that your tabs are located above the address bar. In Firefox, Internet Explorer, and I think maybe even Safari, your tabs are located below the address bar. And at first that's a big cosmetic difference, but as you start using Chrome, I actually like the tabs above the address bar better. Um, so you'll get used to that and then you'll go back to Firefox or something and you'll say, man, I hate having the tabs below the address bar. So it's just one of those things that you have to get used to. Um, but to open a new tab, I can either do Control T on a Windows or on Mac. So I can do Command T or Apple Key T, whatever, however you want to call it. But I could also click this little box right here if you're not a shortcut key fan. So I click that box and you'll see I open a new tab. And I'm just going to go to Google.com in this tab. And you'll see that with my tabs above the address bar, it really looks like a folder. I'm in Google and I have this folder open. I click on this folder and it looks like I opened another folder. So I really like how that works uh, from an appearance perspective. Um, but that's obviously something that you may or may not like. To close a tab, I can obviously hit the little X button on the particular tab. You've got your back button, your forward button, your page refresh button, and as I mentioned earlier, your home button over here on the left. Um, so. Another thing I'd like to talk about now is how to bookmark a page. So let's say I want to bookmark AntsonAlex.com. Well, there's a few ways to bookmark a page here in Google Chrome. The quickest way is to click on this little star icon to the right of your address bar. You could also click on bookmarks and say bookmark this page, but it's an extra click. It's double the clicks actually, and over the course of the long run, that could use up a lot of your time. So I tend to use the star. So if you click on the star, a little window is going to pop up and it's first going to ask you what you want to call the bookmark. So I'll just call this AntsonAlex.com. And then it's going to ask where you want to put the bookmark. By default, it's going to go in the bookmarks bar, which is right up here. And you can see it's already temporarily adding it there for me. You also have another option to add it to other bookmarks. And I'll show you how that works in just a minute. But let's say I add it to my bookmarks bar. I can go ahead and hit done. And you'll see that AntsonAlex.com is now up here in my quick links. And if I were to navigate to another site, and I wanted to get quickly to AntsonAlex.com, I could just click it, up, click on it in the quick links, and boom, there I go. It's also important to note that these quick links, you can change the order. So I could just move, pin it to after AntsonAlex.com and drop it there. You can put them in any order that you want. So that's how you add bookmarks to your quick links. Now let's say I just want to go to Google.com and I want to bookmark Google.com. I'm going to explain to you in a little while why you probably won't need to do that. But let's say we did. And I want to add it to my other bookmarks instead of my bookmarks bar. I'm going to hit the star. I'll call it Google, and then under Folder, instead of choosing Bookmarks Bar, I'm going to go ahead and choose Other Bookmarks. I'm going to go ahead and hit Done, and you'll see when I do that, there's now a folder, or a link over here on the right side of my Bookmarks Bar, entitled Other Bookmarks. If I click on it, it's going to list all of my other bookmarks, and right now I only have one, and that's Google.com. If you want to, at some point in the future, create folders for your bookmarks, you can go to click on bookmarks and you can go to bookmark manager and then you can manage all of your bookmarks. You can create folders within your bookmarks bar or subfolders within other bookmarks and completely customize all of your bookmarks. I believe you can also right click up here in the toolbar and you could add a folder. So I could, you know, call this email services, and use multiple emails. And then I could go ahead and when I add bookmarks, I could add it into this folder. So you can have you could have hundreds of bookmarks right up here on your quick links bar simply by using folders. So it's definitely something you want to think about. Another thing I want to mention is that tabs in Google Chrome are completely movable. So I tend to like my tabs in a specific order. So let's say I want Google to be the first tab instead of AntsonAlex.com. I can just click on it and drag it over and they switch positions. At the same time, I could also click on a tab and drag it into a new window. So maybe I want two windows side by side. I could go ahead and I could, you know, resize these windows so I could see both of them. And you know, I could resize the other one. I'm not going to do that right now. And I could have two windows open at once. Once I'm done with my two windows, I can grab this tab at the top and I can drop it back in my main window. So I love that about Google. It's very Google Chrome. It's very transparent and fluidy and movable and that's great. Um, another thing that I would like to show you, and this is probably my favorite feature about Google Chrome, is the quick search feature. If you're coming from Firefox, Internet Explorer, Safari, one of those browsers, you're used to having your address bar right here, kind of where it is in Google Chrome. But then you also have a quick search box to the right where you can search Google. Well, Google Chrome is made by Google, so they make it a little bit easier. You'll see that up here in my address bar, I could go to AntsonAlex.com, and it will take me to my website. 
Or if I left off the .com, I could just search Ants and Alex on Google. So this address bar right here, this area searches as both your address bar to go to websites and your quick search bar to search Google. So I could search cool internet browsers right up here, not going to web address, and it's going to search Google for me. So I don't have to save google.com to be able to do searches. I can search from right here. Um, I will warn you though, whatever tab you're currently on, so if I'm on ansonalex.com and I want to search Google, if I just type something up here, it's going to replace this page. You'll see that ansonalex.com is now gone. So to avoid that, you're definitely going to want to open up a new tab and then go ahead and search Google. And you can see there's my Google search. Um, so Google Chrome, like I said, a great browser. This should definitely be a good overview for you. Um, another thing you might want to take a look at is if you search Google Chrome extensions, there are a bunch of add-ons for Google Chrome. I don't know the exact web address. It's the Google Web Store. But if you click on this link here after searching Google, it'll take you to the Chrome Web Store, and you can get a whole bunch of add-ons and extensions for your Google Chrome browser to enhance your browsing experience. So that's the quick rundown of Google Chrome for Mac. I hope you'd enjoy it. And again, this is Anson from AnsonAlex.com.